آبیمای تاریخی روز نوه دی و بسیرت مردم کلانتری صده هشت نفاق from West Palm Beach where the president continues his holiday vacation not too far from where we are at his Mar-a-Lago resort and despite the fact that he has been on vacation he is keeping a close eye on these protests in Iran and the administration is making it clear that they are standing with the people who have taken to the streets to protest against their government in fact the president himself using the powerful pulpit of his Twitter feed to send a clear message to those protesters the president tweeting last night quote many reports of peaceful protests by Iranian citizens citizens fed up with their regime's corruption and its squandering of the nation's wealth to fund terrorism abroad. Iran the Iranian government should respect their people's rights to include, that should include their right to express themselves. The world is watching and then he used the hashtag Iran protests. Now the president's statement, which came late last night, echoed that of his State Department from earlier in the day. The State Department said, that the United States supports the demands of its people in Iran for basic rights and an end to corruption. And of course, it's not a surprise that the president would stand with the people protesting against the Iranian regime. There's been a very tense relationship between the president and Iran. In fact, uh, the United States uh, believes that Iran is involved in the conflicts in both Yemen and Syria. And of course, Donald Trump himself has been very critical of the nuclear deal that was hatched with the previous administration. He campaigned against it and continues to say that he believes it should be reviewed and possibly come to an end. So this morning, the president of the United States making it very clear that the United States stands with the protesters and not the regime in Iran. Christian Victor. All right, Ryan Nobles, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, joining me now, Arwa Damon, CNN senior international correspondent, uh, live in Istanbul, also Era Lewis, uh, CNN political commentator and political anchor for Spectrum News, also Julian Zellers, a CNN political analyst, historian, and professor at Princeton University. Arwa, I want to start with you and these uh, uh, protests. There are also thousands of pro-government uh, protesters uh, who are out today in Iran. First, give us an idea of what uh, is happening there, the conditions that prompted these protests, and the scope of, of these, these competing uh, efforts. Well, these demonstrations began Thursday night and then started really spreading throughout the course of Friday, not just in the capital, Tehran, but throughout the entire country. And in typical fashion, the Iranian government did respond fairly heavy handedly. There have people who have been detained since the government says that the demonstrators did not obtain the necessary permits. And in response to these anti government demonstrations, we are today seeing people coming out in support of the government. Now, those that have been taking to the streets, the anti government camp, that is, it really presumably started out because of economic dissatisfaction. The country has been in something of a downward spiral and the population to a certain degree did perhaps think that things would get better after the nuclear deal uh, with the United States. They did not necessarily, at least not to the degree that the population would have liked to see. And then you have underlying issues, of course, that have been really the cause of a lot of dissatisfaction with how the government is handling a number of issues. There is a sense uh, amongst a certain segment of the population that the government is focusing too much on foreign foreign affairs as opposed to domestic affairs and increasing sense of frustration that that the government is too uh, focused both financially and militarily and politically on what's happening in Iraq, Syria, mm. Yemen, Lebanon and in uh, in Gaza as well as opposed to trying to really focus on its own issues. But the government for its part is warning uh, people that they should be careful when they go out into the streets, mm. especially when they go out coming out in opposition of the government. They are accusing uh, foreign agents as being the ones who are really trying to spark all of this at this stage, Victor. 
Uh, Julian, it's interesting that the reason that this response, this statement from the president is pretty remarkable because we have to contrast that with some of the statements and those statements we did not hear from, hear from the president in relation to other world leaders in similar situations. Um, giving high marks to Turkish President Erdogan even after the crackdown and that uh, attempted coup in 2016 and the purging and consolidation, we did not hear this type of warning from President Trump in that situation, nor with the Saudis, nor with the the president of the Philippines, and the list goes on. It's true. It's a selective support for civil unrest. Uh, and this is a country that's been more on the radar for President Trump. And there's different reasons that he would support the regime becoming destabilized uh, other than human rights. Nonetheless, uh, this could be something bigger. This could portend uh, to more protests and the possibility uh, of, of pretty serious unrest in the country. We don't know yet. Uh, but the inconsistency is uh, a, a result of this not really being uh, so much about the present support of human rights, uh, so much as his animosity for the Iran regime. In his first public speech since the protest began, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani says people have the right to protest, but he also said the protests should make the public, quote, feel concerned about their lives and security. Two protesters are dead, and the Iranian government has blocked access to a popular messaging app, an app that protesters have been using to coordinate and organize since these protests began on Thursday. The government also blocked access to Instagram. Many view it as an effort to slow down and stop these growing anti-government protests. Government officials say the two protesters were killed this weekend. There have been a number of clashes between police and protesters, but these appear to be the first deaths tied to the demonstrations. No word on the exact cause of death, but government officials claim no bullets were fired by police. These anti-government protests began again on Thursday and show no signs of slowing down. They started in the country's second largest city and have since spread to the capital. Thousands of people, many of them college students, are in the streets of Tehran demanding a new government. In a statement, the opposition group said, quote, the protest movement will accept nothing short of the a removal of the Islamic regime and establishment of a free democratic Iran with a new government defined by a constitution guaranteeing the right of every Iranian citizen to live free of oppression and discrimination with justice and equality. The protest began over economic concerns, concerns and surging prices for basic goods. Many items, things as common as eggs, have reportedly increased in price by at least 30 percent. Now it's about more than that. And in video, some protesters can be heard shouting down with the dictator. The government has repeatedly said these protests are illegal and they have warned that protesters who, quote, create disorder will pay a price. We all saw that how they misused cyberspace and promoted violence, trained systematic riots, taught weapons and explosives crafting, stimulated protesters to fight the police, and encouraged the burning of houses and stores. These people are surely not part of the people. Local media says at least 200 people were arrested in Tehran yesterday. At the White House today, a group of Iranian Americans are planning to rally in support of the opposition. Leland? Yeah, we'll have a crew there when that happens. Ellison Barber here in Washington. Ellison, thank you. President Trump weighing in on Twitter again this morning about protests erupting across Iran, saying in part that, quote, the USA is watching very closely for human rights violations. Here for a fair and balanced debate on this is radio talk show hosts Josh Kimbrell and Garland Nixon. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with me Good to this be here. afternoon. We're talking about Iran at the end of 2017. Not really a surprise. Um, it's been a common thread throughout the, the course of the last year. Um, but these protests are newly erupted and seem to be growing by the hour. I want to get both of you your take on so the president has tweeted three times now about this, I believe, which absolutely elevates the profile of these protests, not just here in America, but in Iran as well. What are um, U.S. strategic objectives? Garland, I'm going to give you a chance to answer that first. What do we hope to get out of 
taking a side? Well, you know, I think um, the, the main thing that we can hope to get out of there is a stable government. If things, you know, there are a lot of people cheering for regime change, but they wouldn't be happy if we had like regime change and Hezbollah became the new government. So you want a stable government. I do think that the U.S. needs to stay as far as the, away as they can from this, because when you have a government in the Middle East that is in trouble, the one thing they want is to be able to blame it on the United States and not have to discuss the issue of what's going, what they're, the United their true States problems. government always the scape to, scapegoat of choice for countries in the Middle East. We exactly. have to point out, they're, Josh, they're going to be the scapegoat of choice at any rate, though. I mean, when you look at this, in my view, this is an opportunity to reset the P5 plus one, the Iranian nuclear agreement from the Obama era, because it clearly demonstrates the fact they've killed multiple protesters now. We're dealing with a rogue regime. We're dealing with a regime that could care less about human rights. We're dealing with a regime uh, that even with the $1.7 billion cash payment the Obama administration made to them uh, in pursuit of this nuclear deal and the release of hostages has funded terrorism with it. These protests we are witnessing are because of economic pressure on the people of Iran. Well, the sanctions relief ostensibly was supposed to help the people of Iran uh, overcome some of that pressure, and of course the government's not done that. This is a chance for us to push back and say the Iran nuclear deal was a mistake. We need to reintroduce sanctions. I think we need to push for a better deal or scrap it all together. Uh, and, and frankly, the president did the right thing by siding with the protesters. We should do that. I think the United States aggressively should support uh, change in the Iranian government. Um, okay, so, so Garland, Josh picks out an important thread. There was, a, it was a, a lot in that answer. But one thing I want to pick out in particular is the idea that the fact that these protests are going on today is evidence in and of itself that the Iran nuclear deal failed to achieve its objectives of provide uh, one of its core objectives, which was to have when sanctions were lifted, the billions of dollars that were opened up and Iran was now able to sell oil on the international market, some of those some of that revenue was supposed to be steered toward the Iranian people. So the fact that it's not making its way to them, that the regime still has such a close hold on these profits, is evidence of failures in the nuclear deal itself. What do you say to well, that? Well, I think we've got to be wary of taking that position, because let's not, let's not forget that within the Iranian government, there was some pushback against the, the deal by hard, hardliners in the government. Where there wasn't pushback was amongst the people. The people of, of, of Iran were dancing in the streets over the deal because they wanted sanction, sanction relief. So right now, if the government takes a position that it's a bad deal, they're actually opposing what the what the what these particular protesters have argued for for the, for the reason you said they saw it as a way to get economic release so but it was never but that never happened never that didn't happen I mean the point is but was it I guess the question then Josh is was it designed to do that or was that just a convenient side effect that the Iranian people were sort of led to believe would come on well, the, the Rouhani regime basically had deal. to sell it that way because the hardline clerics were, uh, you know, ostensibly opposed to any discussion with the United States. Of course, we found out the UK Telegraph was reporting that even back in 1979, Ayatollah Khomeini was in conversations with the Carter administration. So the idea the Ayatollahs have never talked to the United States when it's convenient is sort of laughable. But the Rouhani regime sold this to the Iranian people and to the hardliners, as saying we're going to get economic relief for the people of Iran. Now. They also, in lots of communications we heard about behind the scenes, said, well, we're really never going to abandon our nuclear program. And I, I think there's two problems here. One is they had no intentions of ever helping their people overcome the abject poverty they're stuck in because of a tyrannical regime. Number two, they never have any intentions of abandoning uh, in whole their nuclear ambitions. And those are not peaceful nuclear ambitions. I mean, they have openly said they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth and make America's streets run with blood. And back where I'm from in South Carolina, when your neighbor threatens to kill you, you don't give him time to get a gun. You try to find a way to stop the weapons program. And I think this is the time to push the, well, the reset button and say that mm -hmm. we need to uh, revisit this Iran nuclear deal. All right. Well, gentlemen, we've got to leave it there, but we'll keep our eye on these protests over the coming week. And hopefully we'll have you back to weigh in with some, maybe there'll be some positive developments. We'll Thank be you. Reporting Thank on you. That. Happy New Year. With the protesters and not the regime in Iran. Christian Victor. All right. Ryan Nobles, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, joining me now, Arwa Damon, CNN senior international correspondent, uh, live in Istanbul, also Era Lewis, uh, CNN political commentator and political anchor for Spectrum News, also Julian Zellers, a CNN political analyst, historian, and professor at Princeton University. Arwa, I want to start with you and these uh, uh, protests. There are also thousands of pro-government uh, protesters uh, who are out today in Iran. First, give us an idea of what uh, is happening there, the conditions that prompted these protests, and the scope of, of these, these competing uh, efforts. 
Well, these demonstrations began Thursday night and then started really spreading throughout the course of Friday, not just in the capital, Tehran, but throughout the entire country. And in typical fashion, the Iranian government did respond fairly heavy handedly. There have people who have been detained since the government says that the demonstrators did not obtain the necessary permits. And in response to these anti government demonstrations, we are today seeing people coming out in support. From West Palm Beach, where the president continues his holiday vacation, not too far from where we are at his Mar-a-Lago resort. And despite the fact that he has been on vacation, he is keeping a close eye on these protests in Iran. And the administration is making it clear that they are standing with the people who have taken to the streets to protest against their government. In fact, the president himself, using the powerful pulpit of his Twitter feed to send a clear message to those protesters. The president tweeting last night, quote, many reports of peaceful protests by Iranian citizens citizens fed up with their regime's corruption and its squandering of the nation's wealth to fund terrorism abroad. Iran the Iranian government should respect their people's rights to include, that should include their right to express themselves. The world is watching and then he used the hashtag Iran protests. Now the president's statement, which came late last night, echoed that of his State Department from earlier in the day. The State Department said, that the United States supports the demands of its people in Iran for basic rights and an end to corruption. And of course, it's not a surprise that the president would stand with the people protesting against the Iranian regime. There's been a very tense relationship between the president and Iran. In fact, uh, the United States uh, believes that Iran is involved in the conflicts in both Yemen and Syria. And of course, Donald Trump himself has been very critical of the nuclear deal that was hatched with the previous administration. He campaigned against it and continues to say that he believes it should be reviewed and possibly come to an end. So this morning, the president of the United States making it very clear that the United States stands of the government. Now, those that have been taking to the streets, the anti-government camp, that is, it really presumably started out because of economic dissatisfaction. The country has been in something of a downward spiral, and the population to a certain degree did perhaps think that things would get better after the nuclear deal uh, with the United States. They did not necessarily, at least not to the degree that the population would have liked to see. And then you have underlying issues, of course, that have been really the cause of a lot of dissatisfaction with how the government is handling a number of issues. There is a sense uh, amongst a certain segment of the population that the government is focusing too much on foreign affairs as opposed to domestic affairs, an increasing sense of frustration that that the government is too uh, focused both financially and militarily and politically on what's happening in Iraq, Syria, mm. Yemen, Lebanon and in uh, in Gaza as well as opposed to trying to really focus on its own issues. But the government for its part is warning uh, people that they should be careful when they go out into the streets, especially when they go out coming out in opposition of the government. They are accusing uh, foreign agents as being the ones who are really trying to spark all of this at this stage, Victor. Uh, Julian, it's interesting that the, the reason that this response, this statement from the president is pretty remarkable because we have to contrast that with some of the statements and those statements we did not hear from, hear from the president in relation to other world leaders in similar situations. Um, giving high marks to Turkish President Erdogan even after the crackdown and that uh, attempted coup in 2016 and the purging and consolidation, we did not hear this type of warning from President Trump in that situation, nor with the Saudis, nor with the, the president of the Philippines, and the list goes on. It's true. It's a selective support for civil unrest. Uh, and this is a country that's been more on the radar for President Trump. And there's different reasons that he would support the regime becoming destabilized uh, other than human rights. Nonetheless, 
uh, this could be something bigger. This could portend uh, to more protests and the possibility uh, of, of pretty serious unrest in the country. We don't know yet. Uh, but the inconsistency is...